lesson six of course one for one understanding the end times we're going to look at the four tracks of prophecy and understand why it appears that believers suffer in this world where we are brothers and sisters listen carefully father in heaven by your spirit we ask you to just have your way and glorify yeshua in our midst by the ministry of holy spirit grant us understanding in yeshua's name we pray amen and amen in previous lessons we discussed the golden thread and keys to understand the end times in this lesson we'll consider another way to comprehend the events of the end times it is a reality that all the end time prophecies in the bible are programmed to run on four broad tracks and those broad tracks are one prophecies concerning Israel as a nation and the Hebrews as a people. Then two, prophecies concerning the kingdom agency on earth, the church. Then three, prophecies concerning the apostate church system, foisted on the world by Satan and humans who see church as avenue to accumulate power over others, make money, and be influential in society. And number four, prophecies of times of the Gentiles, that is sinners, when they will grow in power, lead the world, possibly afflict Israel, and elect Hebrew people as the Jews and through saints all over the world. Now, diligent students of the Bible who are watchful and prayerful will have no difficulty designing how already fulfilled prophecies fit into these tracks. And with the help of Holy Spirit, the elect will design on which tracks unfolding prophecies are running. Sometimes, Fulfilled, unfolding prophecies involve a combination of two or three of the tracks. Let's now look at the tracks and then look at the issue of suffering. Track number one, fulfilled prophecies concerning Israel and Hebrews as a people. In a clear and complicated manner, Elohim elected Israel as a hand, prophetic handpiece of his prophetic clock. You know, no other group has this extraordinary privilege you know, where Elohim, finding nothing else to swear, swore by himself to bless his friend Abraham and his offsprings. In Genesis 12, 1 to 3 and 7, he says, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, into a land which I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I'll bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Lo, thy seed will, pos will, will I give this land. And where and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And in Genesis 22, after tempting or trying Abraham in the matter of Isaac to sacrifice, when Abraham obeyed and was about to slay his own son, Elohim issued this word. Genesis 22, 15. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and multiply or multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And the book of Hebrews put it in very colorful language in Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 13 all the way to 18. About Elohim finding nothing else to swear, swear by himself. And made an immutable promise to Abraham. Over 430 years later, Elohim expanded the prophetic blessing profoundly and declared that the Jews will be his peculiar treasure and kingdom of priests throughout the earth realm. In Genesis chapter 19, in giving of the Torah, this was the original purpose of the Lord in giving of the Torah. And Moses went unto the Lord, verse, verse 3, and Exodus 19, the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. 
These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he promised that there will be a peculiar people unto him. And what are the positive effects of this promise? This promise had a profound effect on the destiny of Israel and Hebrews as a people. It has brought them the number of benefits I want to uh, describe for you now. One, inexplicable blessings and prosperity, even amidst adversity. Upon all of the Jews so far across the world, they prosper in the midst of adversity. Number two, it has brought great security in Elohim and his promises, which have never failed. Amen and brethren, Israel is secure in the hand of Elohim. And it doesn't matter how many nations mass up against them. They always come out victorious. It is only when he punishes them for their sins that Gentiles are permitted to afflict them so that they can cry unto him and he will deliver them. Number three, that made them oracles of Yahweh by which the base and fallen nature of humanity was kept in check through the Torah. The Torah became the instrument of showing the mind of the Father and almost all nations from different ways adopt the Ten Commandments as the basis of their constitutions. Number four, it is through this race that the seed of the woman, Yeshua, was manifested as stated in Galatians 3, 13 to 16. Number four, or number five rather, his incarnation and sacrifice on the cross became the only pathway for the emergence of the one new man of Elohim who would be neither Hebrew nor Gentile, but his sons in the earth rim expanded in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to verse 24. Number six, the Hebrews, also known as the Jews, produced all but one of the 12 disciples of Yeshua. That is, Simon the Canaanite was the only exception, the African, I mean, the Canaanite, you know. Most of the first fruits of Pentecost were Jews. They preached the gospel. The early church was a Jewish church. What are the neg negative effects of this promise? From the day Yahweh made the promise to Abraham, all hell has been literally let loose. Results are this. One, Satan sees the Hebraic race as mortal enemies to be destroyed at all costs. And two, consequently stirs the jealousy and anger of the Gentiles to hate both the nation of Israel and the Jews as a people in a way that is clearly abnormal. You see that even in the church system, the placement theology, all that, anti-Semitism, Number three, Satan did all he could to pollute the lineage the Messiah was going to come from. When he designed his one going to be of Jewish heritage, he began to walk with gross immorality, with sins, hoping to frustrate the plan of Elohim. If you look at the genealogy of Yeshua, you see names like Judah and his ancestors' relationship with his daughter-in-law, Tama, that produced Phares, who was in the genealogy. You, know, uh, you look at Rahab, the prostitute of Jericho, look at Ruth, the Moabites, and you know Moab and Ammon were products of the incestuous relationship of Lot and his two daughters after they were delivered from Sodom and Gomorrah. You know about David's sin with Bathsheba? You know about Solomon and a host of other venal people? What was Satan doing? Whether he could destroy the seed, the unknown to him election, does not console the past. Election is about Elohim's purpose and determinate counsel. Number four, Jerusalem, capital of the Hebraic nation of Israel, has been projected to Gentiles as a prize that must be possessed. And all world rulers over the years, they do not regard themselves as fulfilled until they possess Jerusalem. Men and brethren, while some prophecies concerning Israel have already been fulfilled to the letter, there are other prophecies which will unfold in our time and on this side of eternity leading to the Battle of Armageddon, which is the end of this side of eternity, the Battle of Armageddon, when Yeshua will return to stamp out those armies that are massed against Israel. Then there are some other prophecies about Israel which will be fulfilled in the age to come when the manifest kingdom is established in the earth rim and Yeshua will be ruling the whole world from Jerusalem, the capital of his kingdom. Then track number two is the church age. Prof there are some prophecies in the Bible concerning the kingdom agency on earth, the church. Those prophecies describe the, the true church as a living, loving organism of saints, 
who flow in spiritual gifts and callings led by the fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Watch it. The true church is described in the Bible and the New Testament. The glorious church which will emerge out of the sanctifying power of the word, the one is sanctified with the washing of the water of the word as Ephesians 5, 26, 27 says, is going to be the one new man of Elohim in the earth realm, neither Jew nor Gentile. And this is the ongoing dispensation running concurrently with the other tracks. In other words, the true church is going to emerge in glory this season. And it's going to be biblical. Then track number three. There are prophecies concerning the apostate church system. Foisted on the world by Satan and humans who see church as an avenue to accumulate power over others, make money, be influential in society. One that you need to go and take things from the Old Testament and dress it up. Dressing, cap, all that. It will be a system based on religion where the church is a building you go into on certain holidays, it's rituals you perform, you know, to please the Elohim, known as Mystery Babylon. This apostate church system was prophesied in the gospel as the tares among the witch, and whose primary loyalty is not to Yeshua, but to human governments and the bellies of his advocates. Men and brethren, this apostate church system prophesied in the book of Revelation chapter 17 is going to be the predominant church you see in the world. It's going to be popular. Some people who even were born again, spirit filled, are going to fall for this apostate church system. And it will be filled with rituals and then given in you know, all the holidays and all that and feast days. And it will miss the essence. And they will do it so blatantly. That here is the Bible describing the church, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. And people will do their own stuff. They will not regard the Bible as sufficient to guide. People are going to lead people the way they want. And a lot of people will be unconcerned. Then track number four, the times of Gentiles. This is an ongoing dispensation run at the same time at the church age. This explains most world affairs and why Gentile nations have been ruling the world in history. For instance, Israel has been, ruled, has been under captivity to Egypt. After Egypt, Assyria, then Babylon, then Medo Persia, then the Greek or Macedonian Empire, then the Roman Empire. Israel has been captivity to all these ones at one time or the other. Men and brethren, they repeated failure of the people and nation to live on the narrow way which the Lord ordained for them to be a peculiar treasure unto Yahweh occasioned the harsh judgment and most times the judgment was the scattering of the Jews to different parts of the world under Gentile rulers who treat them badly in some cases treat them well and in the subsequent chapters we will examine the times of the Gentile in a peculiar I mean in a greater measure brothers and sisters then the question is, why sin suffer in the world? You see, a lot of believers get worried and anxious and get troubled when things don't work the way they want and it looks like believers are suffering. And they say, why do we have to suffer? Why are things happening to us today? My own is too much. My own is too protracted. Well, brothers and sisters, you know the interesting thing. The same afflictions are accomplishing the brethren across the world. Across the world, brethren are going through. But the question is why? One of the things which understanding of time does is to enable saints to be stable and strong despite the challenges they face, which may occasion pain and suffering. Listen to this. Until the day when the kingdom is established in the earth realm, suffering is part of the normal experience of true saints because the manifest kingdom has not yet come. And for now, we are called out by the Lord to live amongst a world that is dark, a Gentile team world in which the rules are stacked in favor of iniquity. So if you can learn how to sin and join them in their contemporary sins, and each generation has some contemporary sins. If you can in your own generation see that contemporary sin and embrace it in your workplace, embrace it in school, the rules are stacked in favor of such people. 
and those in rebellion against Elohim and his laws, they seem to enjoy. It is by the embrace of the cross and ministry of suffering that we we overcome such pains. Philippians chapter 2 tells us, verse 14, Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be the blameless and harmless. That is, even if you are suffering without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of Elohim, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Yeshua, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. And in First Peter chapter 2, 9-12, to But you a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show for the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim, which had not obtained mercy, but have now obtained mercy. Then he said in verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, that's what we are, abstain from fleshly lust, which were against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, whether they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify Elohim in the day of visitation. And we need to also remember that Yeshua was born during the time of Gentile rule. The Roman Empire was ruling. So he experienced the time of the Gentiles and he knew and prophesied about it. In Luke 21, 24, he says, and they shall fall by the image, uh, by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Let's not forget that it was the Gentiles, Rome, who condemned Yeshua to death and crucified him. Yeshua knew that his sins would need to cohabit the same earth dream with sinners, the Gentiles. The solution from a kingdom point of view was not for people to be translated into the heavenly realm when they are saved or to be isolated from the world. He did not ask the Father to take the saints out of the world, but to preserve them from the corrupt system. In John chapter 17, from verse 19, he said something interesting. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I'm glorified in them. And now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name, that thou, all that I, you gave me I kept, and none of them is lost by the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, Holy Father, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy uh, fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And as thou sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for thy sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither prayer for these alone, but for them which shall also believe on me through thy word. In other words, Yeshua was praying for you and I also. He also advised us to walk in wisdom with the systems and persons of the world. He has not asked us to, be, to establish his kingdom by physical means, as the pseudo-kingdom and the mountain movement is trying to suggest. He had not asked us to fight the powers that be where he planted us. He didn't ask us to abuse human governments and attack them. He rather asked us to be wise and allow Holy Spirit to navigate us forward, not our emotions or thoughts. He has given us grace to know which jobs or businesses we cannot do in good conscience and to resign when it be, rather than give the gospel a bad name. In due course, he will vindicate us. He said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He said, he didn't ask us to go and do a pity party. He says, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great 
is your reward in heaven for so persecuted ye they the prophets before you. Then in Matthew chapter 10, 16, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And brothers and sisters, in First Peter chapter 4, we are told from verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happen unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Yeshua's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Yeshua, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of Elohim rested upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a chief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Elohim on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that will bear not the gospel of Elohim? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Elohim commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Brothers and sisters, understanding and walking in this truth will keep us on the straight and narrow way till the end. So, we're going to dig into scripture to see these tracks, how they pan out, so that we can know the things. I mean, if the Lord has given us a preview of what lies ahead, then he's done us a world of favor. We need to embrace it. That's what the Holy Scriptures is, a compass to guide us into the future and into eternity. And what religion does is that it takes the compass away and men, traditions of men, rituals of men, and ideas of men are used to stuff into the mind, into the brain of people so that the typical person caught up in religion can never understand prophecy. Things are happening and they are so clearly pointing to what the Lord was saying, they can understand. That is one of the dangers of religion. Religion blindfolds people and keeps them jaywalking into hell. That's what religion does. So we are about to close right now. I'm going to give you the assignment. And the Lord is going to empower us so that the blindfold is taken out. And we are not going to be under the influence of those negativities. And that's why we encourage you, take away all the ramparts of religion that are involved in what you are doing. Go and check out the Bible. Anything that is not biblical, dump it aside and focus on the word. Understand the word. As a matter of fact, it's better for you to be on yourself and understand the mind of the Father and be led by the Holy Spirit. And He will guide you into relationships that you connect with and just to go into because that near church is near you. And you're talking about building, you're talking about a crowd. The Lord loves us and He's given us guidance. By way of assignment, please provide, number one, please provide the four broad tracks of prophecy in the Bible. What are they? Two, how are Satan and Gentile nations responded to the election of Israel and promises of Elohim? Three, how do Christians, why do Christians experience suffering though they are saved? What should they do? You know what? This gets more interesting. The lessons we're going to do, uh, we're going to be going after this will now begin to go starting with the times of the Gentiles. The Lord just wants to take that out of the way and begin to lead us to understand biblical prophecies. May the Lord bless you as we pray now. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify your holy name. Have your way and let the truth that has gone forth penetrate the hearts and minds and wills of the people and let every one of your own be separated unto you in this season. Let the compass latch into their hearts and soul that no one will be lost in the end times. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day. 
by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same as Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be do the master class you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.